In the last days of 2020, the strangest movie I saw all year was released on Netflix, while most people were busying about or recovering from a round of holidays that could finally be called back to normal. White Noise, directed by Noah Baumbach, features Adam Driver, Greta Gerwig, and Don Cheadle, and is based on a 1985 novel of the same name by Don DeLillo. In this book, a college professor named Jack Gladney and his family navigate technological intrusion on daily life, an environmental catastrophe referred to as the airborne toxic event, and domestic turmoil, the whole thing attempting to answer the question, how do we self-sustain amid existential terror of social crisis and death? In other words, Kylo Ren, the writer-director of Little Women and Iron Man's friend, walk into an unfilmable DeLillo novel and enact a pandemic metaphor. This is a movie review. It's also an oral history of the last three years, and a discussion of postmodernism in literature. I myself watched this movie at 10 o'clock on New Year's Eve, which made for a delirious experience combined with the absurdist content and rapid pace of dialogue and plot. Not a single line sounds like something a human would say in the course of day-to-day life, and the plot ricochets from mysterious experimental drugs to university lectures about Elvis to emergency evacuations to the near-religious resilience of the American supermarket. By the time I'd sat through the entire musical number that plays with the end credits, where the whole cast dances in surreal rough synchrony in the aisles of a hyper-stylized 1980s supermarket to an electronic rock song, Purchases in Hand, I couldn't imagine anyone watching this movie and getting anything out of it if they hadn't already read the book. So, the book. In the 1970s and 80s, when DeLillo was writing White Noise, postmodernism was at its height. As a literary movement, postmodernism is associated with fragmentation of art forms and blurring boundaries between high and low art. As opposed to the universal stories and universal structures of modernism, Postmodernism was determined to focus on specific relative stories, dressed up in gaudiness and excess. Alongside this, postmodernism is deeply informed by the economic context of late-stage capitalism, where people are hyper-aware of life as a thing that is produced, in an institutional sense, and are attempting to find their place in the multinational economic world system. In the art world, think of Andy Warhol and his repeated prints of Coca-Cola bottles and Marilyn Monroe's face. In literature, you'd be hard-pressed to find a better encapsulation than white noise. The Gladney family repeatedly return to the hallowed aisles of the supermarket and elsewhere engage with material products as the source of philosophical answers, such as the kids fixating on plane crash footage on the television or Jack hunting through the contents of the trash compactor to find an incriminating newspaper advertisement. Postmodernism is an unstable period, a moment of disorder departing from the universal structures of modernism and with the influx of new forces like increased technology, competing information sources, and the human impact on the environment. One place this is shown in the book is with the middle portion of the plot and what they call the airborne toxic event, a human-caused environmental emergency resulting from the collision of a truck and a train carrying flammable toxic chemicals. The resulting toxic cloud causes mass panic and an evacuation, during which Jack Gladney is briefly exposed to the chemical, which leaves him, as he says, tentatively scheduled to die in several decades. The bizarre thing about watching the recent movie adaptation of a book like this is that many of the concerns in postmodern literature have become active contemporary threats. DeLillo's anxiety about the encroaching intrusion of technology and commercialism onto daily life is no longer a novel worry when we have computers in our pockets beaming advertisements and behavior modification algorithms into our eyes every minute that we give them. The book's warning about responses to climate change is prescient but also simplistic in a time racked with natural disasters, wildfires, droughts, sea level rise causing flooding and destruction. DeLillo wrote about the early stages of emergency, full of denial and second-guessing, and news bulletins that are constantly updating without ever being reassuring, and Noah Baumbach read this fictional account in 2020, when that exact story was playing out across the world. White Noise the film was developed across the course of the pandemic, with Baumbach rereading the novel in early 2020 and writing the screenplay amid social isolation and uncertainty when or even if movies would go into production again. 
Knowing when this movie was made and what was going on in the world makes it nearly impossible not to see so many parts of the story as pandemic metaphors. The airborne toxic event was previously taken to symbolize foresight on climate change consequences, but now it strongly evokes local and personal reactions to COVID-19. The radio constantly updates with new information, new symptoms, new ways to refer to what on earth is going on, cycling from the feathery plume to the black billowing cloud and then to the airborne toxic event. And Jack is just as quick to come up with new ways to spin even contradictory reports to be less urgent or frightening. He's trying to keep his family calm, but also just falling into the trap of thinking that this kind of thing happens to other people, and it all feels pointedly familiar. On the whole, the movie is beautifully filmed. The production design of exaggerated 1980s aesthetics includes sets of rainbow-painted university rooms and a highly stylized grocery store, offering the allure of safety in color-blocked product packaging. Colorful translucent objects are used to filter the eyes of the characters of the camera, actors talk over each other in dizzying scenes that don't pause for breath, and you can never be sure if the script is going for satire or pseudo-intellectualism or total sincerity. There's a lot of distraction going on. Distraction and technological consumerist overwhelm. All of which is thematically appropriate to the book, but also feels like just another contemporary day. DeLillo's exaggerated satire is now just life. Hearing all of this, you may be able to imagine why I say this movie is not for everyone. It's deeply pretentious, often absurd, and so existential it's hard not to roll eyes. But if you go along for the ride, wince at the two real depictions of life in crisis, and laugh at lines like, Californians invented the concept of lifestyle, this alone warrants their doom then you can also appreciate a weird sort of masterpiece that could only have been created out of this particular novel in this particular moment. My review can then be summed up as this. I don't think you'll like this movie, but I do think you should watch it anyway.